Hey folks, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, series of videos where we teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn the worker placement game Neta Tanka from La Bois de Jeu. To set up your first game, place the game board in the middle of the table with this summer side up. For other games, you can also use this winter side. Then prepare the deck of canoe tiles. Shuffle these standard canoe tiles and randomly choose 4 for a 2-player game, 6 for a 3-player game and 9 for a 4-player game. We will set up a 3-player game, so we have randomly chosen 6 cards. Then shuffle these final cards and randomly choose only 1. Place this final card under the deck of standard cards, place the deck on the game board and flip the first card face up. Then add this round marker to the snowflake which depicts the actual number of players, so in our case it will be three players. Also place this visiting nomad token on this spot. Place these nine link tokens on this link space which has no icon in the middle. This area with the three wood icons and one mushroom icon is called the forest area. Place one corresponding token on each spot. Similarly, this area with three meat icons and three hide icons is called the tanning area. Again, place one corresponding token on each spot. Then the area over here with the buffalo icon is the hunting area. Take these two buffalo tokens and place them into this area with this not caught side up. Take the totem pole board for the number of players in the game and place all the player markers to the leftmost space. Place the five Netatanka cards face up next to the board, put the remaining cards nearby and flip the first card face up as well. Repeat the same procedure also for the handicraft cards. Then each player will take a clan board, place the copy power token face down to this spot, four nomads of the player color for a three player game, three nomads for a four player game and four nomads of the player color and four nomads of another color for a two player games. I will explain the small differences in a game plan for two players during the video. So for our three player game example we will need all four nomads. Each player will also get the reminder tokens of his color and one objective card which you need to keep secret from other players. Finally, each player will get starting resources. Randomly select the starting player who will get this first player token. As depicted in this small table, he will also get one wood token and two hide tokens. The second player in the player order would also receive one mushroom token. The third player will also receive one generosity point. And fourth player would receive one more additional mushroom token. All these tokens are in the player's personal reserve. Netatanka is a worker placement game, which means players will use their nomads to place them on various locations on the board to collect resources like wood and mushroom and meat and hide, and then they will use those resources to nourish their clan for which they can get victory points. They will also build tents for which they also get the victory points, They'll also try to build totems and the higher the totem, the more points they can get. And finally, they will craft these items, which also bring victory points. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner. The game is played in several rounds and it's five rounds for a two player game, seven rounds for a three player game and 10 rounds for a four player game. Then each round is divided into three phases. In the first phase, players will place nomads on the game board. The game starts with the starting player and then continues in a clockwise direction. And on the player's turn, player can place maximum one nomad on the game board. Players don't take the actions yet, they only place the nomads on the game board. When all players placed all day nomads on the game board, phase two begins. In the phase two, the gameplay again starts with the first player and then continues in a clockwise direction, but this time the player will take all the actions with all his nomads. 
So first, the orange player will take all the actions with his nomads in any order he wants. Then yellow player will take all his actions. And finally, the green player would take all his actions. And finally, the third phase is simply the cleanup phase. As I said, the first phase start with the first player and then going in a clockwise direction, each player will place one nomad. You can only place the nomad, do not perform the action yet. Then the next player places one of his nomads and the next in a player order and so on and so forth. It may happen that the player will have fewer nomads in his player reserve than other players. In that case, simply skip that player's turn. There are three types of locations on the board. This one is called single space. Single space can hold maximum one nomad. However, if you unlock this copy power, you can use it once per round. You may place one of your nomads to a single space occupied by a nomad of another color. However, you may never copy yourself. And when one player already used a copy power on a single space, no more players can use the copy power on the same single space. Spaces with these icons are called elder locations. Similarly to single spaces, only one nomad can occupy this location. However, these elder locations can never be copied. Locations with this icon are called open location and each player can have maximum one nomad in such space. In general, one player can never have two nomads of his color in the same location. The center location acts as a single space in a two player game and as two separate single spaces in a three or four player game. I will cover the placement rules for two players later in the video. In the second phase, the play starts with the first player and then going clockwise, each player performs all of his actions. When you place the nomads on the game board, place them so that they are standing up. During your turn in a second phase, when you take an action with the nomad, lay him down. You can start performing actions in any order you want. And except for a few locations, all your actions are optional. When you are done taking your actions and resolving action on each location, it's time for another player. Do not remove your nomads from the board yet. Now we will go through all the actions in more detail. First, when you take this action, you take two wood tokens from this forest area. You take the available tokens and add them to your personal reserve. If you would take the action and there wouldn't be enough wood tokens in the forest, you take whatever is left there but you are not allowed to take the remaining wood from the general supply. When you take this action, first take the generosity token from the general reserve and add it to your personal reserve and then add three wood tokens and one mushroom token to the reserve in the forest. You always add all these tokens depicted, even if there are other tokens still remaining in this area. When you take this action, you either take one wood token from the forest or all available mushroom tokens and again only from the forest. Add these resources to your personal supply. When you take this action, you can take one wood from your personal reserve and place it on the totem pole on your clan board. So take the wood token and place it to this totem area. We will talk about the totems in a minute. When you take the action at this elder location, you can either take the action on the left or on the right. Here you take one wood from the general reserve, which is indicated by this hand icon. The wood token comes from the general reserve into your personal reserve. Or similar to this action, you can take one wood from your personal reserve and add it to your totem pole. All players compete to have the tallest totem pole. Whenever you add a resource to the totem pole, you build one stage of your totem. The first player who builds a totem moves the token to the rightmost space of this totem pole board. Now let's take a closer look at this totem pole board. 
The orange player has already built the first stage of his totem. If another player would build the first stage of his totem, he would not be placed to the same location as the first player, but to the next available free spot. In order to get ahead of this orange player, the green player would have to build two stages of his totem. So in case the yellow player would also build the first stage, he would still be placed in the last position. Now let's say the yellow player manages to build the second stage of his totem. He has the tallest totem at the moment, so he would move to the first position and all other players would slide to the left. Now let's say the orange player builds the second stage as well. This time he is not taller than the yellow player, so he stays where he is. Remember, in order to move to the first position, he would have to build three stages of his totem. At the end of the game, the players will receive victory points based on their position on this totem pole board. Also, for each set of two wood and one skull token, players would receive five victory points at the end of the game. When you take this elder location action, you have two options. First one is to take the Handicraft card. You can take any card from those five face-up cards. The sixth face-up card, which sits on top of the deck, is still unavailable. When you take the card, add it next to your clan board to the section with the corresponding symbol. Then replace the empty space with the face-up card from top of the deck and flip the next card face-up from the deck. The other option is to take one wood or one height token from your personal reserve and place it on the incomplete handicraft card. Handicraft cards have the requirements for completion listed here, so you can take one token from your personal reserve and place it on the card. When you take this action, it's the same action as over here, so you can take one wood or height token from your personal reserve and add it to one of the incomplete handicraft items. Once you complete an item, you will score this number of victory points at the end of the game. In addition, for each set of three different completed items, you would also get victory points at the end of the game. When you take this action, you simply take one generosity point from the general reserve. When you take this action, you can make up to three offerings the same or different, choosing from these three options. This option lets you exchange generosity points for resources. You can either return one generosity point and take one resource of your choice from the general supply, or you can donate one of your resources to get one generosity point. When you donate resources, you don't put them into the general reserve, you give it to another player. However, you get the generosity point from the general reserve. The second option allows you to return a generosity point and in exchange you can choose one of the available handicraft cards. If you use the third option, you may return one generosity token and then use the benefit of any link on the table. You can use any links even the ones that other players have benefited from. However, you are not allowed to use this link between the Netatanka and this Elder location. In addition, if you use the same offering multiple times during the same turn, you may never benefit from the same link more than once. When you take the action in this hunting area, this action is mandatory. First of all, you get this generosity point from the general reserve and then flip one of these buffalo tokens with the caught side up. If there would be already a buffalo token with this side up, flip the other token. When you take the action in the tanning area, there is a mandatory action and the optional action. The mandatory action says that if there is a buffalo token with this caught side up in the hunting area, flip the token face down, and then add three meat tokens and three height tokens to the tanning area, even if there are any tokens still present. The optional action allows you to take two height tokens from this tanning area, if available. When you take this action, first you have to discard one wood token from your personal reserve, 
And then you can take two meat tokens from the tanning area and only from the tanning area. Then add these tokens to your personal reserve. Similar to the forest, if you take the action and there's not enough tokens in the tanning area, you can only take what is left. You cannot take anything from the general reserve. When you take this action, you can take up to three wood or hide tokens from your personal reserve and place it in the tent section of your clan board. Each tent requires two hide tokens and one wood token. You start building tents from the left and going in this direction. So I can use my wood token and hide token to put it on my first tent and you don't have to complete the first tent to start constructing the next one. Because the tent requires two hide tokens, I can take my third resource, a wood token, and start constructing the next tent. If there is at least one resource token on this tent, I can start building the next one, and so on and so forth. However, sometimes there is another requirement to pay the resource depicted, so either a mushroom or a meat. I need to take them from my personal reserve and this is not an action, this is simply a requirement. At the end of the game, you score number of points based on the number of tents you have completed. You score points for the consecutive completed tents starting from the left. So for those of you with the creative ideas, trying to complete these rightmost tents first wouldn't work. When you take this action, you can take one mushroom or a meat token from your personal reserve and place it into the nourishment section of your clan board. For each meat token that you place into this section, you will get two victory points at the end of the game. For each mushroom token, you will get one point. When you place the fifth token into the nourishment section, you unlock this copy power, which we have covered earlier in the video. When you take this elder location action, Again, you have two options. First one is the same as the previous action, and a second one allows you to take one mushroom token from the general reserve. When you take the action on the canoe tile, you can only take the action depicted on the left or on the right. This canoe tile changes every round, and I have already covered almost all the iconography you can find here, except for this one. When you take this action, you either have to pay one meat or two mushroom tokens from your personal reserve and you become the first player, so you get the first player token and in addition you take this visiting nomad. Place this visiting nomad somewhere next to your clan board and you will be able to use him in the next round. During the first phase of the next round, when you place nomads on the game board, the visiting nomad is actually a free copy of any other nomad, even your own one. Basically, with the visiting nomad, you must copy someone else. And because it's a different color, you can copy yourself, you can copy your opponents, but you cannot place the visiting nomad on an empty location. As I said, you must copy someone else. When you take the action at the center location of the board, you either have to pay one meat token or two mushroom tokens and then you can either take one Netatanka card or place one skull token from your personal reserve on your totem. When you take the Netatanka card, you take one of those five phase-up cards available. Place the card next to your clan board and replace the empty space with the card which is phase-up on top of the deck and then turn next card phase-up on the top of the deck. Anytime on your turn, you can either use the effect on the front side of the card or you can discard the Netatanka card to get one generosity point from the general reserve. These small circular spaces between locations are called links. Whenever you have two nomads of the same color on both sides of the link, you can take a reminder token and place it next to that link. Links provide additional resources or actions you can take during your turn in the second phase. Their use is optional and when you use that benefit simply remove the reminder token. Links are activated only if there are nomads of the same color on both sides. So if you use the visiting nomad to copy other players action, 
you cannot activate the link between these two nomads because they are not of the same color. When you activate this special link by having two nomads of your color on both ends, take any one token from the stack available and place it next to your clan board. You can use this token anytime during your turn and when you use it, discard the token from the game. Phase 3 is basically a cleanup phase. If no one took the first player action, move the first player token to the next player in a clockwise direction. The visiting nomads returns to its original spot. However, if someone did take the first player action, he takes the visiting nomad and also takes the first player token. Then if both buffalo tokens are flipped with the caught side up, flip one of them to the non-caught side. In addition, if there are more than three meat tokens in the standing area, return the surplus to the general supply. All players take all their nomads back with one exception. There are two elder locations on the game board with these footprints leading to another location. If a player has a nomad in that location, he needs to move to this location and that's a mandatory move. That means that these nomads will be on the board before the start of the next round and will be there for the remainder of the round. Finally, discard the top canoe tile, flip the next tile face up and move the round tracker to the next snowflake. If this was the last round, proceed to end game scoring. First, sum up the points for the series of consecutive completed tents. In this case, it's three and four points. In this example, this tent wouldn't count because it's not the series of consecutive completed tents. Then calculate the points for the nourishment section. For each mushroom token, you score one victory point, and for each meat token, you score two victory points. For each completed card, score the number of points depicted in the bottom right corner. Cards that are not completed don't score any victory points. In addition, for each set of three different handicraft items completed, score a bonus five generosity points. The items in this set are not all completed, so there's no bonus. Then count up the points for your totem pole. First, for each set of two wood tokens and one skull token in your totem pole, score five victory points. Then look at the totem pole board and each player will score number of generosity points depending on their position. The number of points for the player in this position depends on the height of his totem pole. If his totem pole has at least five stages, he would earn four victory points. If the totem pole would have four or less stages, this player would gain zero generosity points. Finally, add the generosity points from your tokens and also from the objective card if you managed to complete that objective. You can use this notepad to sum up all the scores for all players and whoever has the highest score is the winner. In a two-player game, in addition to your four nomads of your color, you will also get four nomads of a different color. Then during the phase one of each round, you can place maximum six nomads. So you can place four nomads of one color and only two nomads of the different color, or you can place three and three nomads. If you have the copy power, you can use the nomad of one of your colors to copy the nomad of your second color. If one of your nomads was forced to stay on the board because he has to take this mandatory move, you will place fewer nomads on the game board, so you would still have maximum six out of your eight nomads on the game board. In the phase two, when you resolve your actions, you can resolve them in any order you want. And remember, links are only created between nomads of the same color. So even though these two nomads would belong to the same player, this link would be not activated. So that's how you play Netatanka. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. You'll be watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beretz and hope to see you next time.